Hey, it's Joe Glyce from the Automator. And the other day we released a video stressing how to branch code in VS Code using Git. And one of our hero members, uh, Scott, has a weekly call with us um, doing tutoring and consulting. And he asked for a little more help and understanding on it. And, decide, and he also said, we're free to share this one because there's nothing confidential in there. So this isn't going to be one of our normal videos because it's a client call the consultation where we're just helping him learn a topic but i think it's a really good topic in in understanding if you saw that other video if you haven't seen it go check it out it's really powerful to be able to kind of lock your code down take a static snapshot of it make changes in a different branch and then if it doesn't quite work you can easily revert to the working one or maybe add a new feature but you can still have your solid one working until you're ready to merge those two back together where you have the new feature incredibly powerful so hope you enjoy it thanks again scott for letting us um, share this with everybody and hope you guys have a great day cheers Irfan, what i've done with this git archive and i'm you know, correct me on my nomenclature as you see fit, is originally I started with a, a different project and it, and now it's on this project maybe. Um, but I think that maybe the best thing to do is just to clear the current repository or uh -huh. get away from the current repository and start a new repository just on this project would be my thought. Okay, so I'm requesting control here. So I want to look at uh, these are the folder. I hope so. Well, and and like oh, I said, oh, this oh, okay, is so, old so this stuff. Is, oh, this that's a uh, some extension called JIT's just pad. So yes. Here, here your file are, and uh, if I go here, I should see repository, but. I don't have anything in there. If I see JIT graph, here I can see your workflow. But if you, you look have... at it, it's like all, except for a couple today, that's all back in, you know, April or before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And it's various projects. I think I did a GitHub, I mean, a, a repository maybe for my main auto hotkey and everything was rolling into it because uh -huh. I didn't know what I was doing instead of doing so, one just for so this project. What you should have is, yeah, it's a one copy and then you can, you can switch to any position from here too. So if I click here, you will have the work of that day. And uh, right now we are here. So we have the latest one and then this is the main. So what we do, we do not work into the main because main should work always. So yesterday video is about that. So so let me just create a branch for you. So well, be before we can create a branch, mm -hmm. um, if I have a whole bunch of different projects in this because mm -hmm. I did too many things because okay. this is... I saw it there a minute ago that said uh, find it. Well, find it was a work project. Um, but 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 it's not in here. Find it. So we are. If if I look here, so you just opened bins. So this is the bins folder. We okay. Are right now opening, and if okay. I go to JIT graph, so it is talking about the bins. If I do show all, so yeah, these these this is about branches, but not other libraries or other repositories sorry it is not talking about other repositories so so this okay. is the single repository we are looking at okay and and i don't know if you have other repositories so you can we can load them on your pc so we have to go to the folder and open those folder in here and then we can so this is the separate repository and it will always be treated as separately okay then that's uh, I, I got lucky <laughs> yeah so i think you have the idea because this jit graph tells us you are working but you are always working in the main 
So here you created a kind of commit that is skipping up and then added then merge merge branch into an you deleted that branch so you created some branch for the readme file so here we are creating another branch for development so so you can call call it development so we yeah we can create this dev create new branch and now if we look at it and uh, look in our so our main and dev are same but whatever i comment in the dev then it will go ahead and create another separate tree okay so, so here we are in this library uh, it, it is about bins i remember so you you were telling me just uh, just a while ago you were t telling me that you do not understand what i did previously well um there's a lot of truth to that um i have a lot of homework to do to understand all your coding uh -huh. um however um when we last left i went to try the program out in the real world uh -huh. yeah so and when I, did, mm -hmm. when I did that, errors appeared. Oh, okay. I would like to see those errors. Um, okay, let me show you. Okay, so if I go to the main and run it and look at the restack uh -huh. list uh -huh. you'll see that i got all these 17s in here and i didn't catch it as it was happening it wasn't until i ran into the next move was a 17 bin 17 did i realize that oh there's multiple 17s so at some point something went wrong and uh, we yeah, started getting duplicates uh -huh. so i'm not sure where that occurred okay but so i did think of a potential method of um preventing it would be is it I want to think that it's in a map that you can't have a duplicate. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that maybe that if we had a dynamic bin or future bin map versus the current or static bin map, and if we always used maps, that would prevent ever having duplicates. Well, it would it would cause an error if we were to try to have a duplicate. Hmm. But that's just my thought. You're the expert, so I'll let you take a look and understand and figure out what's going on, and I'll watch. Actually, I I I would like to look at the reason first why this happened. Sure. And and then we can see we have to just fix a few things or just we have to change our way just you are uh, explaining we have to create another bin and then a future plan or something like that. Yes, sir. So that would be another step. But we might, f I think we, we can catch this error and fix it. So only 7.1 is being repeated. So if I go to resource and I click in this, so this is the static, this was the original. So 17 is being repeated here. And dynamic, okay, so these are future plans. So there is no 17. So what it did, can it, you create, it, create? 
And one okay. other input I should give to you as I was testing, uh -huh. um, I let me show you real quick what I did. Uh -huh. Is that one of the buttons that I have is to update the bin list. Uh-huh. Yeah. And do you do you remember how that worked? Um, yeah, we work on restacking list. Uh, I didn't work on update bin, but you showed me. Yeah, the update bin will go through the OneNote and One grab mm -hmm. all the different data. Maybe maybe it is doing something wrong? It Well, it may have conflicted with your coding, my old coding, and your new coding may have conflicted and caused this error. So I don't know if the error was in something okay, in your so, new code or so, something from my old code messing your new code up. So if you hit the button update bin list, and then we can see what it does. So, it, okay. It's going to go and grab the data from all the OneNote pages. Okay. And then once it's done that, it has updated the dynamic stacks list. Okay, it, it updated the dynamic stack list, but static is the reality. So static is went wrong, by the way. I'm sorry, uh, static what? So the static is the real, uh, the uh, real location for the bins. Which is kind of went wrong. Which is kind of went wrong. So you can oh, see multiple kind of went wrong. In, yeah, yeah, went yeah. wrong. So, yeah, and, and so my program would not have updated that. You're correct. So can your program update this one too? Um it can, but it it I mean we could allow it to, but it's designed not to. Okay. So how should we fix that, the actual location? So how um, do we get a exact, exact, correct location? Because we are generating this, and then we are working with this one. And now this one is wrong. So what I would do is correct this one and then try to find why the, when this one is repeating the bin names. And I guess it would be, you know, I can always recreate the static manually to get it synced up with reality uh -huh. as needed during development. Uh -huh. However, if we went to static stacks original uh -huh. and ran through all of the moves that I did, maybe the error would occur then, or maybe it does have something to do with me updating the dynamic with my program. I'm not sure where the error came in. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm renaming this one. So now this one is error. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's create copy of this one. And make it static. And then what we're going to do is repeat the moves that we did. So if I run this tool and I run this, so we are going to do move one by one, correct? Right. And should we maybe keep the static list okay you have the static list up so we should see the 17 error in that as we go through the moves uh -huh, uh -huh. you're right so right now let's see where is 17 okay so 9.17.1 has 17 so right now i should start from 1.2 so that sounds this, good th th this list going on and on and on to 16 Correct. So, so we are starting from there. So if I hit next move, and uh, for example, I moved it. Right. Okay. 
So my next move is F, 13, 2. Okay. So let's see when we move to the 17. Maybe the save button is doing something. So should I save and restart to check? Yes, and, and I did do that um, intermittently as I was working. Okay, so I saved it. Okay, so please place the bin. This is just for the physical move. Right. And then we we can close this thing. Yeah, because it was that way you're filling up your hole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So right now. Okay, so this was wrong. So save button is doing something wrong. Okay. So, so we got it. <laughs> so... Uh, how did you know that the save button did something wrong? Because when I hit save and restart it, because the save button will write this list, this static static stacking. Right. So, so zero point three one is repeating. So, oh, oh! I missed that. Good catch. Uh -huh. So here. What I would do here in the lib, restack, and then if I scroll down, I just save button, save button. Mm -hmm. Okay, save CSV, right? Here, okay. So we have old move, we have new moves. Ah, uh, okay. So we are looking through three. Okay, so we are doing. 18 rows, three levels, and we are building our key. So we look into the new map. If new map has the key, we add it into our list. If old map has it, we add it in our list. Okay. What is the key? He is okay. So let me grab you here. So, so these are the keys. Okay, so using the stack is the key. Yeah. So these are the the from key. stack. Yeah. Is the these key. are the old, old, and these are the new. Yeah. Hmm. So if I look into the new one, then I get the name. Then I go to the old one. Then I get the old name. And uh, okay, so bin and next bin is equal. So we do error, which we do not get. Otherwise, we do else we know it, and then we replace. Hmm. This is doing what I expected, but this old map and this new map. Oh, I am building it from the LV. So maybe I'm wrong here. So let me. Copy everything from here and paste it here. Okay, deleted everything, paste, save. And then I would run this tool again. Okay. So I would deep I would like to debug. Okay. And I would like to I would like to stop in this function. Yeah, right there, correct. So, hmm. so this is the new LV, this is the old list view. So if I do one move, next move, third move, and then I, Save it. 
Okay. So my new map says duplication, any duplication in there. So no duplication in here. 716, okay. So I would like to, okay. I would like to take a snap. And Joe's tool, Joe's tool's running as well. Yeah. So this is the location. Maybe I should take both. Okay. So. Okay, this one is. So the, the rule is the bin available in here will not be seen here and bin here are not available in this list. So this is the rule. And somehow in our calculation, we fail here. So when we fail here, I would like to stop here. So, okay. So the bin is, so key is, 1.1, old map, 1.1, 28 should be the bin, 0, 06, okay. So this is the old location, okay, 1.1, I would like to see, 0, 0, 06, and moving to 15.1, hmm. Okay, 2.1. So 2.1 is not here. It's here and this should be 2.8. And 3.1. Three point one is B. Okay, let me got there. So okay, what we got here? So we got B after B. Three. So one, two, three, B. Okay. Three, one, three, two. Okay, three, two. So we will get three, two. We don't have, yeah, it's zero, zero, seven. Oh, the issue is three, two is here and three, three two is also here. Hmm. Sure enough. Hmm. So first we will check new and then we go to the, let's see what it does. Okay, it never went for the old, that's fine. Okay, so now we go for three for three and now we got three. Yeah, zero seven and zero three. So this is gonna be written into the file. So now we got to the key is thirteen point three. Oh, so okay. So this one is. Okay, how can I look at this one? I cannot look at this one. Hmm. 
No, so put it on the watch. no, I would like to stop here. Okay. So in the watch, I would like to. And feel free to clean the watch out. Yeah, no problem. So I can copy it and I can do a notepad. Okay, control. Replace and we would do this replaced by. How can we do a new line? <clears throat> hmm. uh, Alt enter, or maybe I have to copy it like here copy and paste. I cannot paste it here. You want me to try? Yeah, okay, you can paste it, I think. I don't know if it worked. Okay. Or oh, we can just look at here, maybe. So every, this is a new line. So, oh, okay, so there are so many no. Mm, that's the error. So... When it writes no, when it does not find this one or this one, is this even possible? A location that is not found in both? You wouldn't think so. So there are, I think, so many null characters. If I look into this, yeah. So in the line 16, one is okay, K, 16, two and three, 16, two and 16, three, 16, one, 16, two, or 16, two. There's no sixteen two. No, I don't see a sixteen two. Yeah, why? Why do you don't we don't see sixteen two? Not on either one. Yeah, here we got sixteen two. On oh, no, a two, it, yes. It, yeah, yeah. It it is a, it is a from location. Oh, it is a two location. So this should end up here, but. We need 16.2 here. Okay, now I got it. So you can see 16.2 is having some error. So, so this is the error. And I found it why it is happening. So I should copy this. Select here. Select all. Copy. Paste. Save. Hmm. Ah. I should reload this one. Now this one is correct. So let me check 16.2 here. Sixteen one is here. Sixteen one is here. So there is no sixteen two in here. There's no sixteen three either. Hmm. So that that's the issue. But there's also no seventeen one seventeen two. So these are maybe the bins that don't need to be moved. 
if they are not supposed to be moved, then they should appear here. Oh, that's right. That's the on that side. So let's see the reality. So sixteen twenty six fifty eight. Okay. Yep. And the dynamic is twenty six. And, and the dynamics only got 16 rows. Oh, that's the issue. That's the issue. So why does dynamic have 16 rows? Okay. So let's run this tool again. And should I click here, update bin list? Sure. Okay, if I click here, yeah, 16. So there, there, there is our issue. Okay, so let me go check real quick, if I might. And rerun the main GUI. How we are reading these? Um, let me check and see something I suspect may be causing the issue. And that's what's doing it. Um, because the list got too big, uh -huh. it ran off the page. Um, so let me... Uh, let me put it on another monitor. You won't be able to see it, but no, no problem. Now it makes it longer so that all the pages will show up. So how you are getting those lists? Oh, oh yeah. Right? Sorry to answer your question. Um, I'm doing it with um, UIA and I am... Uh, I'd have to go back in to show you the specifics for me to remember what I was doing. Okay, uh, so what but, I what I suspect, so why they are not getting, uh, we are not getting those texts because every time you get text from Element, so you should f focus it first, so you scroll in into it, so you make it scroll into view, so. So there are web driver methods that does that for the web pages before clicking them. So okay, so is... that is what the problem is. It's not your code. It was my display and and uh, my code. But the we we eight, can fix that. We, we can fix that thing. Eighteen so is right, showing now. Yeah, right now I should run this. Oh. Oh, because our list was wrong, maybe. No, 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 this is this is fine. <laughs> yeah, now it's fine because I reran the update bin list with mm -hmm. one note on full screen on a vertical monitor. Oh. So the vertical monitor didn't cut anything off of the of what was showing on the screen. Uh huh. So all the bins were captured. Okay. So what we can do is make a smaller list or then or what we can do is fix our UIE code. Yes. So what should we do now? Fix uh fix our UIE code? Um at this point I probably need to run another test to make sure 
that in the physical world to go back to testing the physical world. Mm -hmm. Um, and ultimately my UI co code is, is in need of repair, but maybe that's not what we do today. Okay, Um, no problem. but maybe what we do today is, um, how do I share my Git with you so that as I'm working on it, I can share a problem and you'll have the current code. Okay, so do you have JIT account? I do. Okay, did you publish this repository? So you privately publish this repository. Correct. Okay, so with private repositories, you can add developers to those repository so they can work on them. Okay. So, so what we will be doing here is... Uh, I don't know if you are using Chrome or Edge for GitHub. Um, I'm really doing everything in GitHub through, um, through, uh, VS code. Okay. But um, I, don't, I don't know how to add a, a sure. contrib contributor to a private repository using <laughs> VS code. Right. But I don't know. I don't know how to use a browser. So, so what do we do here is uh, go to your GitHub. If you are logged in. Now um, we're recording this, and I don't know what Maybe. will be seen on the GitHub. Okay. So you are not signing. Uh, do you use other browser? Maybe you are signing over there. Um, I think that this will log you in. Okay. Okay, we are on dashboard. So we go on our dashboard and... Okay, now let me... Yeah, so I don't have bin. I have not put bin up here, apparently. Okay, so we have... As, to a, the... as a repository. Okay, so this repository is not published yet. Apparently, that I believe that's correct. Okay, so we will go there. And uh, we'll select in the source. And then what we have here. Um, hmm. So we change this thing. Okay, so we change, we updated the weight and stack list text, and then this thing and this thing. So we can delete this one, I think. Yes. Error. So we discard changes, delete file, and this one is, this one is 17, not 18. Correct. Mm, that's wrong. So Correct. This should, this should be 18. So let me look at it. Yeah, 17. So still we, we are missing one and another row. And it may be because we haven't done a save since we um, corrected mm. the dynamic. Okay, let me check if... Um, I think, yeah, this is not fixed. So can you run it again, the update, so we can see it is working fine? Okay. On your other sure. monitor. So I go to bin main GUI and rerun it and do an update bin list. Now this is just going to update dynamic, not static. Oh. The only thing it updates static is your code. Okay, so we we have to update the static. So... And so that would be restack. 
Okay, so I should copy here. Okay. And I should paste here. And uh, if I go here and then I think this this list is correct and this is wrong, correct? I believe yeah. you're I believe that no. Um the one on the list ha has duplicate seventeens on sixteen and seventeen at least. Uh yeah. So what we have so in the original list oh in the original we have seventeen. So we need to find out what is our 18. And and I'll tell you what we can do is is not worry about what's right or wrong. And I will manually recreate the static list for instead of undoing the moves I did last week in the physical world. Uh -huh. I'll just do a new inventory of what's currently there and that will be the new static to move forward. Okay, so I, I'm just, uh, these are templates. So this is just a template. So zero X, one, two, three. So, so our task yes. will not go wrong. So because we are doing 18 loops and, right. uh, and three levels. Yes. When saving. So this should be the same. So I should close this one, close this one. I go here. We can look at this one. Okay. This one is fine. And original. Okay, original. Oh, now this original is fine. Oh, I, I put something in the original. Um, and that doesn't bother me. Yeah, I should put it here too. Yes. So, so we can, we can see update, then list. So these are just thin lists. So, okay, if I publish it, so, oh, it published it. So there is a repository in there. Maybe it's just and, not named what I'm expecting it to be. Mm -hmm. But your profile is default. Show profile content. How can I know your profile in there? So, okay, here. So there are code plugger. Okay, code plugger there is. So on the dashboard, I suspect that the private repository never been shown unless we go to the repositories here from here. So projects. Okay, there are no projects. Um, repositories show more. There are no bin. Yeah, and that's where I was thinking it was under that find it by mistake. Okay. Six repositories. So if I go to find it. Now this is where we may not want to record some of the code. Okay, so I am going outside. So repositories. Maybe can we go inside this one? And and that's again work stuff. Uh -huh. Okay. And that's why I was thinking that we might need to create a new repository for bins because I think it's messed uh, up with the other we, stuff. We are so this repository is already called bins, JIT bins. So we just need to publish it separately from the uh, rest? This is the 
in the C drive project bins and then I if I go here sorry I cannot do okay oh These are outputs of the JIT. Yeah, VS Code is has so much and I and I think no one touches everything. <laughs> so yeah, we just know it's a remote. Bins project reset our hotkey, but there is no remote. I cannot drag why I don't know why. <clears throat> Add remote. Yeah, now we can add it to the GitHub. Okay. So we can give it a name. So what I would like to give it a uh, like bench. Okay. Now cancel. I don't know how to merge the merge it to the publish it to a remote. So let me close this one, and I have to go to view and uh, terminal. Here, so okay, this is different terminal than do you have Git bash? Do you install Git bash? Did you install it? I do not believe so. So, I've been, I think that I can show you how I did what I did. So or how to do it with VS so, Code. So what I what I have here, so let me go to a folder. So can I go to the here? Yes. Okay, Ben. Uh, okay. Let me bring so, it to screen. Oh, okay. So if I right click here, I should have a menu for the JIT bash. So right click, it is taking time. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything happen. Yeah, I'm doing right click. Can you do it? Uh, right click. Yeah. It is doing uh, not not here in the in the in the middle of the folder. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't seeing your mouse. I was yeah. seeing my mouse. Okay, open Git Bash here. Okay, so that's that's different. Yeah. I want this terminal into into your VS code. And from there we can we can initialize JIT repositories. This is this one, this is log, the workspace, forward port. Now and I want to think that you can do it there. This is already published, but I don't know how. 
add remote from GitHub. No, this is not a remote. So turn on cloud changes. So this repository is on your cloud, not GitHub. That's for sure. And uh, I don't know if we have terminal here. Yes, there's terminal in that last window in the last menu at the bottom. No, we need git bash here, this one. Gotcha. So here we would type something. Just... So let me show you something real quick. Any of that help you? Uh, which one? Uh, yeah. oh. Over in the um, uh, copilot, I had asked it about the git commands. Mm -hmm. Or we can we can get the command to get the remote. Yeah. So I don't. Are you seeing my um, over here? You seeing this? Yeah. This is uh, this is about the adding remote. Yeah. So get remote set URL origin. I don't see the command here about the origin. Setting origin. But I I want to I want to just find out what is the set URL. So I want to get. So I would say get remote. Okay, so oh okay, so the remote is your cloud. Hmm. So yeah, because it's, everything it's got, it's got at their speedy. That's your account. Yeah, so <clears throat> um and I don't speedy. know how to how to have multiple remotes. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. So so what we're gonna do here is create a repository and then give it a remote. So what I'm going to do here, uh, go to your dashboard home and new and uh, bins. Bins is available. Okay. Okay, so warehouse stock report maybe. Okay. Private, I'm going to make it private. And uh, I think we do not need license. We do not need ignore. I just create repository and this is our URL. And then we go to this and we say get remote okay. my keyboard there is a remote add origin space URL okay I paste it and okay this is about key random I enter Origin already exists. Okay. Get 
Oh. Okay, that's the origin. I think I have to use git remote that URL and origin Okay. Git add GitHub, git add GitHub. So here we have to tell it. So I cannot delete it for some reason. Let me know if there's anything you need me to do. Mm -hmm. Usual. So here I would lead it. Okay. So here I would say get at GitHub dot com and then your username and then the bin. Cool. And then I go here and then I update. Okay, so yeah, this is a fatal. Yeah, I did something wrong. Not a problem. Oh, so if I do this, could not find remote show command output. Text origin dev couldn't find remote reference dev. Okay. So I have to create dev in there. So here in the bin, I would create branch. I would create branch from here. Create code space. Create a readme file. On that last screen, it had a button that said create new code space. Okay. Past.txt. Past. Commit. Commit changes. And then I can create dev branch. So I can create dev. Maybe. Dev like this, and it is looking for the branch. 
I should create a branch. Okay, let me. Hey guys. Hi, Isaiah. How are you? Hello, Isaiah. So, Isaiah. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah, we. I just want to know. So, can I create a branch from here? From where? Let me see. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you would have to clone it first. So is this your repository or somebody's? Yeah, it, it is Scott's repository. And it is, Sorry? It is, it is Scott's. We are ah, OK. Yeah, so you would have to fork it first, I think. And then you can do whatever you want. Because for you no, to modify No, no I, I'm not forking it. It is. Uh, Scott is logged in. Oh, he's logged in. Yeah, then yes, you can you can create a branch in here. Um, click click on view all branches. Okay, view all below branches. there, and I think they're on the top right. It says new branch. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can create one there. Yes, that's one of the good things about um. Oh, now there are GitHub. two new. New, oh, new no, no, no. It's not two. One of them is your branches, and the other one is the active branch. So oh. you can switch the active branch if you want. But but actually, can you go back? I just want to see what it tells me. Um, you, yeah. you're, you know, hold on, hold on. But but you you haven't you, you did it on GitHub, right? But you haven't gotten the branch. So hold on, you created it yeah. on your computer first, right? No, 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 no. It's uh, Scott's computer, and it is Scott's VS Code. He uh -huh. was his origin was uh, his right. origin was what is right. called OneDrive, and then I changed it, and now it's telling me one down, thirty two up. Uh huh. So but but you cannot create it. You cannot create it on GitHub then, because now you have a conflict. Well, oh, hold on. Do that again. Click on that again. Okay. Um. Hit. Okay. Oh, now it's working. Okay. Now click on Show Command Output. Tells you what the problem is. Hold on. Let me see. Fatal. It says ambiguous argument dev both revision and a file name. You have a file called dev somewhere. Yeah, dev is the branch name, by the way. No, yeah, but it seems to me that there is a file named dev as well. Oh. Go go to the files. I go think there's the a, a folder named dev. Yeah, there it goes. That's why. So the folder is called dev, and the branch is also named dev, and it is like, what the heck do you mean by that? You so can what you have to do is go to the Git graph. No, well, not the folder. OK. Go Git to the Git graph. graph at the top, right? Yeah. Now rename the branch. Just right click on the branch and, and rename you the You're welcome to develop rename the folder. Or develop. Develop. Right. Rename it. And that problem will not happen anymore. Now, the problem is that branch doesn't exist in the other code. So click on it. It probably will tell you, hey, do you want to say OK and don't show again? OK, well. Now, show the command output. Let me see what you got. It says uh, you were trying to get that. And then it says, hold on, not symbolic reference, right? Because right now, we're in a thing that does not. So what I will do before you do that, let me explain. Mm -hmm. I would I would choose where to work because you did the same action in two places at the same time. So you created a branch in your local computer called mm -hmm. development, and you also created a branch in GitHub called, called dev. So now you have a confusion. 
you either work in one or work in the other. So now refresh this page, refresh it. Let me see. Right, now delete the dev branch from here. We just created that, we don't need it. Yeah, yeah well, you just did. But yeah, exactly, you just did, you don't have to do it twice. It's the same, right, stay there. Now go back to VS Code. Now open Git Graph, refresh Git Graph on the top right. There's a little refresh button. Let's make sure that we have that. Now you see this origin development that right click on that and delete it. That origin dev delete. Well, on right click on the name itself. Yeah, there. Now delete remote branch. Yes, delete. That way we're both computers right now should be synced. Now the development branch should not be published yet, right? Because it is on your local computer, but it is not on the far computer. Click on synchronize changes. Hit okay and don't show again. Oh my god. <laughs> It's always going to say that. Now it will say cannot find. OK, that's perfect. So that means that we're now almost in this stuff that it knows that there is no rev over there. Now, reload VS code. Stop whatever you're doing. Re reload VS code so that they're synced. Right. And the next time the dialog shows up, just say OK and don't show again. OK. Now, that branch is not there. So go to git grab. Git graph and right click on the bell on the name. No, nope, always on the name. On the name, right there. Push branch. Let me see. But but actually, it should say publish. Yeah, set up stream. Say yes. Push. Let me see if it lets you. Once it finishes, you see that now it says origin over there, right? Whenever you have a branch. If it doesn't say origin, that means that that branch is not set up on the upstream. But now go to GitHub and refresh it, and you should see that branch now. Refresh it. You should see it. You see it there? Yep, there it is. Now you should have two branches, right? Now, if you see it, you see you, see you have both, right? Here now. Are. So that's it. So now they're both sync. Now you should be able to push, but you already have the code because you pushed it already, right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. let me explain. So again, GitHub and VS Code can both be used for working with Git. I wouldn't recommend working with both at the same time, like create a branch on one side and then create it on the other. Just pick one. Either you use GitHub to do all that, Mm -hmm. Or you use VS Code to do all that, but don't do the same thing in both. Because then what is going to happen is what you were having, like, yeah, it doesn't understand it. It, it is going to be like, oh, I don't know what you mean by this or that. You know what I mean? So actually, his, his branch was already published to OneDrive, and that was the issue. And To uh, OneDrive? What do you mean to OneDrive? Um, the origin was OneDrive previously. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I see. So 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 he was pointing to a local. He was pointing to a local thing, and you just changed it to. Yeah, and and, and there yeah. there was there was no publish button here. Right. No. Yeah, because he was pointing to the local location. The way no. how. Well... Uh huh. Uh, usually, I have a publish button in here when I have a local repository, so I can publish it. No, because because again, it was pointing to a local branch, so so to a local file. Mm -hmm. So so what's going on is your origin, your remote repository, mm -hmm. can be on the internet, or it could be in your computer, right? Yeah, OneDrive is also it, internet, I think. It wasn't. Okay. So, so as you're describing, it sounds like you had it. Your, your origin was pointing to a local file in OneDrive, right? Yeah. So that's the reason why the origin on GitHub was not pointing correctly, mm -hmm. because you were you were you're telling it, look, my server is in another folder in this computer, but now you're telling it, you know what, my remote, my my origin. It's actually on the internet. And now they are synced. 
Okay. So, so, uh, so at the beginning, I think it is a little bit confusing when you start out, but mm -hmm. once you understand what is going on, so, so I um, usually put my what? origin to be on the internet, not on a local computer, unless that's okay. what I want. So Scott was wanted to share this repository privately on the GitHub and then he wanted me to have a remote so have a contributor ex access so i can okay. work on this i can work on this repository so right that's that's, why... that's totally great that's great i would in general let me let me give you an advice mm -hmm. i would only have the um main branch on the internet but not the development branch see what i mean Mm -hmm. the development branch but, should but, not have an origin yeah but he, he also wants to see what is being developed so that's why oh okay oh okay I get it yeah okay so in that case that's totally fine that's perfect so what, what I will do let me, let me let me show you how this looks and, and, then, and actually once you request a pool People would, so let me share my screen for a second here. Mm -hmm. Can you guys look at my screen? Mm -hmm. Can uh, you see my screen? Let me see yeah. if I can get to it. Let me, can you stop sharing, Griffin? Uh, I'm not sharing it. It's just uh, let me stop oh, yes. sharing. Yeah. Or I can, I can, I think I can uh, stop uh, your participant share. There it is. Can you see mine now? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, yes. I'm yes. Working on it. It's, it's Joe's screen. Well, yeah, exactly. Joe's screen. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I logged in with his account. Ha. Have to. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I was actually getting some videos out. So, can do this. Okay, now I see your screen. All right, cool. So, basically, let me show you what, what a. a, a a normal setup would look like. So if you can see my screen, you see this AutoHotKey Toolkit branch, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Now here, you can see the master branch, you can see the compiled and the version, but you cannot see a development branch, right? Yeah. I see that, right? Now, whenever I look at master, I could see all the commits that have been done in uh, let me see where where can I see the commits uh, here. In the master. I can see all the commits. All right, so all the development that was happening, I can see it, right? But what you cannot see is that if I open VS Code on my computer, right? So this is my computer now. If I open our hockey toolkit. You will see that let me see one. Later. Later. You will see that in here I have an, a development branch. See it there, right? Yeah. So whenever I'm working on my computer, you cannot see it. Nobody can see it. Because my development branch, notice how the master has an origin, right? Mm -hmm. But the development branch doesn't have an origin. So I can experiment. I can do a lot of things in my development branch, and people will not see that. Once I'm ready, what I do, so let's say that I'm ready, I merge everything into my master branch, right? So I merge it, and you will be able to see all that. So you see this white space, location, scaling issues, snippet library. If I look up here, you will see the DPI scaling issues. You can use, you can see the white space, location, the snippet library. So you can see them, but you can only see them when I'm happy with the code and I merge it. You see when I merge the branch here, when I merge it, you will see all that. But as I'm working, you cannot see what I'm working on because I might do something and then say, nah, I'm not going to merge that into the master branch. You see what I mean? I can experiment 
and people will not see a lot of um, a lot of commits. Then later on, I'm going to delete them all. That doesn't make any sense, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, sometimes I might want to not have individual commits like this, but merge all of those commits into one commit and just push it to the master as one big thing instead of a lot of little details like that. So it depends on how you want to work. Both are okay, but this is a very common way that people work. If you go to um, things like FFmpeg, you're, you're not going to find like, so GitHub, if I am in GitHub and you look for FFmpeg, you might not see like all the branches you, you don't see a development branch. You see, you see release branches. You see that, but you don't see the the the, the development branch. You you cannot see that because there there are uh, so many things going on, and you have ten people working at it at the same time. That what you only look at is when they release it. You only see the working code. You never see experimentation, but that is very common. Like people don't have a development branch available for people to see. Not because you're hiding anything. It's just that it doesn't make sense that later on, once you finish development or, or experimenting, you delete all that. And now that people see that everything got deleted, you know, <laughs> so that, that's what it is all about. And um, hopefully that makes a little bit sense. Cool. Yes. All right. And uh, Scott wants to share, uh, add me as a contributor so I can develop it on. Yeah, you can share. You can share your screen again, please. So if you go to the public repository, if you go to GitHub, right? Okay. Um, in the browser. Yeah, you want to um, jump in? Yeah, let, let me let me grab a request. All right. Control. I'll slow your way down. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. So here you are in the settings, and on the left, go up a little bit. Um, you have collaborators at the top, and that the same list at the top here. That's when you're gonna add somebody, right? And you can find by their username. Yeah, there it goes. You add it, and then he, you have to respond. I have, I have get an email that. invitation. Yeah. Once you have it, that means that whenever you make changes and push them, they will go straight into the repository. If you don't have, for example, let me let me explain something here. If you don't have access to a repository. You can still, so for example, me, if I don't have access to this, I can still send you a, a, a I can still work on the code and push it. And what it's gonna do is that it's gonna show up right below that where it says pull requests. You see that? Uh -huh. Right below where your mouse is at, go down. Uh -huh. well, your, your mouse wasn't up in a, in a location. Go, go up, go up. Go to the left. There, pull requests. That's where it's going to show up that somebody tried to add code to your code base. Uh -huh. And then you can look at it and say, yeah, I want to do that. Or no, I don't want to do that. You can choose. So if somebody doesn't have access, it's not that they cannot give you code. It's just that there's an extra step in here. You can accept the pull request or deny it. Uh -huh. But if somebody has access to the uh, repository, this step is going to be skipped. As soon as they push, it's going to go into the into the request. Does that make sense? And you can actually go to the R hotkey code. So right there in in VS in GitHub at the top on the search, look for the R hotkey repository. Not not there. Just just on the search bar on the top right. Just look for R hotkey. Remove that. Remove the yeah exactly. Auto hotkey. Yep. Search for it. Yep. Not this one? The, the one at the bottom that says repositories. Repositories. There. 
Please no, the first one. Yeah. No. And you might see, you see where it says pull requests on the top right? Oh, well, top left. Yeah, that. Those are people who send code and lexicos would either look at them and say, no, I will not put them, or yeah, I like it. Or And you see this Colada is actually sending a lot of requests recently. He has been working on Arohaki, which is great. I actually like that because he's very good at what he does. So he adds it, and then Lexicos is going to answer you and say, yeah, I like that, or no, I don't like that, or yeah, we'll implement it, or no, depending on what he what he's thinking, because he has a weird plan. But this is how it looks like when somebody sends code. Um, when somebody sends you code and they don't have um, uh, access to the repository, it's not that they cannot. And you see where it says commits on the top? Right in the tabs, yeah, you can click on that, and you would see if you click on this file on the first one, yeah, no, above, yeah, that. If you click on that, you can see what he did. What was the code? He just added that into one of the files. He put it in the manifest, right? So I can see what he did. Everybody can see it actually, and it depends well if the person wants to add that or not. And yeah, that's basically how it works. Git is for that, um, collaborating between people, even if they don't have access to the to the repository itself, they can still give you. Uh, and here where it says files changed, it says one at the top. You see the commits and then there's files changed. You can get a list of all the files that were changed with that report, with that commit, something like that. Uh -huh. Hopefully that makes sense. Yes. Yes. Yeah, cool. But with Git and GitHub and those kind of things, it's a matter of practice. The first time or at the beginning is going to be a little bit confusing because there's a lot of things going on. But you will notice that there's a few things that you do over and over again. And then you get used to doing them and it becomes really easy. You just look at it and say, oh, that's what I have to do in this. I wanted to ask you, Irfan, where, where is the file uh, for the file explorer, the other file explorer oh. that you have been working on? So it's, it's in the AHK file explorer folder. HK. Okay. okay, 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 okay. Good, great. Thank you. That was it. So you guys can continue. I, I needed to get something with this because I'm helping, well, I'm, I'm, I'm having a conversation with the guy who is creating the debugger for our hotkey, mm -hmm. and he's doing something. And um, I wanted to look at what we did for... Uh, for getting the list of scripts, I want to verify something on that. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Yeah, All right. Go ahead and keep keep at it. If you have any other questions, you'll just let me know. I'm gonna be muted in here, okay? Okay, cool. Thank you, sir. All right. So right now I just publish it in a very complicated way. But in in simple you can uh, you can create a folder, for example, if we have a folder here, it's a project. So let me create a project here. So can I create a folder here? Sure. Okay. So we create a folder here. Past repo. And I go into there and uh, I open this. Oh, sorry. I open this with with VS Code, which I cannot. Uh, I copy this. I create new window, and then I open from here, open folder. And then I give it a path, and I get it. So here you can see it is not initialized. 
and uh, here you, you can see initialize repository publish publish to github so if i press this button and from here i can tell it a name so it is suggesting me a uh, name here you can say test repo okay so, so if i select one of these they will create a, a public or a private so for example i'm i want to create a private repository so it will go ahead create repository without needing for here but for some reason this publish the repository was already published to your somehow one drive i don't know how that works okay so so it is still telling me OneDrive project bins, but this is also available on the, what we call GitHub. So if I, if I click this and in a matter of like few seconds, you will find here, there is a, another repository in your page. So in your GitHub. Right. So here you've got like now you have seven repositories and that would be eight repository so this this is how that's simple but uh all your repositories are private you can make them public uh, you can also create public repositories but for private repositories if you want someone to work on so i don't know how to do it with vs code but here it is very simple you have to go to the bins and go to the settings and then collaborators and then i just accepted the email and now it is telling you yeah now i can collaborate okay and and you want to remove me so you can hit this delete button and then i will no longer able to see even even see this link so now this repository will appear for me but it will not appear for anyone else because it is private. Perfect. So that's how we share. Anything else you want to do with this uh, repository? No, I think that's good for now. Um, and then I can go do my homework and recreate the static list and re resume the uh physical world testing. Okay. And then I can let you know how that works out. Cool. And uh, how about your uh, other thing about the OneNote file? You have, you have to, the all bins have to be visible for UIA to read it. So. Yes. Yeah, so. <clears throat> That's something that we can get into at a later date because I'm I'm mm -hmm. I'm working around it by making the list visible in OneNote on the monitor as opposed to mm -hmm. uh, I'm ostriching. Okay, cool. You so, you recognize the ostrich re reference? Ostrich, I. The ostrich, the bird that sticks its head in the sand. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know if if it that bird really does that, but I hear that phrase about the sticking head in the, into the ground. Yeah, I, I would guess the bird does it. I don't know. Um, however, there was a post about um, that that was a coding a way to handle an error in coding. Did you see that post? uh so so it was it was in um the telegram and, and it was that if there's an error that you know that's in your code but it's unlikely that anybody will run into it very often and it's going to take a great deal of effort on your part to fix it that if you choose to ignore it then you're remediation was the ostrich method. <laughs> uh, ostrich. 
And, okay, and so, so. so that's what I've been doing is just working around it and ignoring it without fixing it because it was going to take me a lot of time to fix it. So at some point, you and I can go back and, and visit it, and it probably won't take you a great deal of time like it was going to take me. Okay. So... Uh, for for today, I I think we are done. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. So it's one hour and twenty eight minutes, I think. Okay. So we will continue tomorrow. Oh, not tomorrow. Like next week, same day. Um. Yes, that should work. Cool. And meanwhile, if I need anything, I can telegram yeah. you. Yeah, you're, and, you're, you're free to ask anything, anytime. <laughs> and now you'll have access to the code. Mm -hmm. um, so this ought to uh, expedite what we can do together. Yeah, that would sure. Great. Great session. Great session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I'll let you get back with your day. Sure. Uh, my pleasure. I'm going to stop the share. Mm hmm and get out of your hair. You, Thanks you a lot, Urban. Yeah, thank you. You use so many words like get out of your hairs. So, yeah, the, <laughs> the word by word meaning do not make sense for me, but I can get some meaningful ideas. What does that mean? So, get out someone's hairs. Yeah, it's kind of, it sounds like a flea thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, get out of your hair is um, uh, just an expression to say "leave you alone" or. Ah, uh, okay. So um, leave you alone. So yeah. it it's, it sounds like a flea thing. <laughs> but you know, it it may have a flea as an origin. <laughs> Maybe. So thank you so much. Bye. It, thank and, you. Mm -hmm.